So recently I covered the Mama Max situation, and if you want a full summary of what's going on or what happened, you can watch my video or the multitudes of videos that have been released since. It's been about a week and Max has decided to address the situation in his own video called I Place Accountability in My Own Hands. Now I think it's fair to say that a video like this is probably warranted from Max, considering the criticism that's been levied towards Max in the past week or so. You'd imagine in a video talking about accountability, he would, you know, take accountability and not say things like this. But you can't. You can't just tell your story anymore. Now you need concrete evidence. Now you need to go to law enforcement multiple times. Now you need to consult with lawyers. And people are making all these public attacks, not platforming any of us, not wanting to talk to the survivors themselves. So instead of addressing all the random rumors that people make up and responding to criticism, I'm, I'm just gonna take accountability for my actions. So starting from the beginning of this apology, I am actually shocked how little Max says in the 15 minute runtime of his video. So I just completed a 30 minute video called Silencing All Survivors that addresses pretty much everything. Uh, it addresses criticisms. It addresses my approach. It includes apologies. It includes call to action on Camden. Uh, a little bit of information about everything, like, but uh, I showed it to some trusted friends and the survivors. Some people loved it, some people had a few criticisms, and then some people hated it and told me not to upload it. I've got people telling me just talk about the case and nothing else. I've got people telling me just address the criticisms. I've got people telling me just apologize. Um, I feel like I'm being pulled in every which way, and no matter how hard I try, I cannot make everyone happy. I don't think at this point making people happy should be his priority. The priority should be the case. You know, the big criticism, he doesn't have to address every single criticism that's levied his way, right? The big criticism is why haven't you created a cohesive video that goes over all the information? He didn't need to drop this apology video. I appreciate the fact that he wants to apologize. However, he doesn't. He doesn't say anything about the criticism. In fact, he goes out of his way to not talk about the criticism. I'm trying to prioritize the survivors over myself, uh, but then where do I put like the general public in that priority list? Um, and uh, it's very difficult. I feel like I'm in an impossible position where I just can't seem to do the right thing. I really do feel for Mama Max here. Like, I understand that the pressure must be, like, hot on this guy, right? It, he must be dealing with a lot of emotions and a lot of pressure, you know, coming from every direction. I can understand that. However, when it comes to the general public, uh, hot take here, we don't really need anything except for the evidence. Like, if you wanted to bring this case to light, like bring awareness to this case. All you had to do was drop a video, a cohesive video, but instead you're doing these antics. You're still in this apology. We'll get to it later. He shills this damn documentary that he's doing, this three-part documentary, and he's still shilling this documentary. Brother, you fumbled. The only people who need an apology from this guy are probably the victims, uh, uh, the alleged victims. If these victims are real, that's the only people he needs to be apologizing to. And he needs to get off of his butt and onto creating a video that goes over the situation in full detail. I'm sorry I can't make all of you happy. I'm sorry to Charlie for dragging him in to a, into a case that is not necessarily his fight. I'm sorry. Again, I think it needs to be pointed out here that people like Charlie would have covered this case if he made a good cohesive video. I think that's the only criticism that's really necessary. Like, I think that's the most damning criticism when it comes to the Mama Max situation is the fact that he did not create a video that was easy to understand, easy to consume, and that helped spread awareness of this situation. Instead, he made a five hour long podcast on another person's YouTube channel trying to launch another person's career while making a, what, 30 minute weird ass Adult Swim bumper style video that barely told us anything about the cult and just shamed creators for not covering this weird situation that we didn't know anything about, you know what I mean? I'm sorry to my audience who don't even know what the heck is going on. Like I'm, I'm uploading shorts, I'm doing live streams, I'm doing weird ass videos. Just trying to find the remaining survivors of Camden Gerard Davis. That has always been the goal for this awareness campaign. And while it, it, it's worked in some respect, it, it's also caused a lot of issues. I don't want to cause issues. I want to resolve these issues. I don't want beef with anyone. Like I, I want to communicate openly. I'm, I'm trying to communicate with my peers and um, I'm trying to listen to dissenting voices 
And I'm trying to listen to voices I trust, too. And every single person is telling me something different, and I don't know what to do. It seems like if you don't know what to do, Max, and I'm really sorry to say this, but if, a, if you really don't know what to do, you're hearing from all these voices, I, I think you should just, like, hand this off. Like, I, I don't know what else to say, man. Like, if you don't know what the right direction is, hand this off to someone who does, who can take care of this. Because obviously you are not doing these victims any, or alleged victims, I'm sorry, because this could be an innocent person. We don't know, we don't have the evidence. But you are not doing these alleged victims any favors here by totally botching this situation. Honestly, right now, Max has an immense amount of eyeballs on this case. Like, it's huge. Like, you could spin all this negative press into something good if you just showed us the evidence. You just made a video. You could do extreme good, but instead you decide to have this pity party response where instead of placing accountability in your own hands, you just cry about not knowing what to do for 15 minutes. And that's why I've been asking for help. People say, just wait for law enforcement to do something. But we've waited seven years and they haven't done anything. So we decided to do, just go public with it. And that's unfortunate that allegedly law enforcement isn't doing anything about it. However, that could have been part of a longer video that showed everything. You know what I mean? Like this could have been a part of a video that you produced. People wanted evidence, so we in, we've been inviting people to our little server where we have the evidence. But then people don't want to listen to the survivors when they're in there and just look at the evidence and conclude it's nothing. The problem is that he's had so many people look at this evidence, like Mudahar, other creators that are in this sphere, right? Other creators, like big creators, and they're all concluding that it's not enough evidence or it's a nothing burger. And that should say something. Like Mama Max is now too close to the situation. He is friends with the victims. He has one of the victims living in his house. You are too close to the situation. You can't look at it objectively anymore. These people are now your friends. It's just hard to look at this case objectively now. Like you have people telling you, Man, look, I'm listening to what they're saying. You know, the victims, right? I'm listening to what they're saying. I, I feel for them, but you just don't have enough. And he's not listening to that. He's just, again, putting the blame on other creators. Like, putting the blame on us. Not me, specifically, but other creators, right? Like, he's putting the blame on people for not believing him when you don't give us anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't do that, Max. You can't do that. You you were, like, making a fool of yourself. Now, I, I've, I've referenced the like dumb, weird Adult Swim editing video he made, right? But I, I really don't think that's a big issue. As much as I hate the Batman voice, as much as I hate that, I don't think that's an actual problem. There's other creators that are really good investigative journalists, like CoffeeZilla, for example. Coffee has a whole set, you know, the $10 million studio. He talks to an AI robot. All of his videos are framed in this like, you know, cyberpunk world. It, it, there's a lot of like, uh, theatrics there, right? There's a lot of like creativity, a lot of like entertaining factors to his videos. However, when you watch a CoffeeZilla video, the amount of information and evidence and story building that's there versus the, you know, AI robot storytelling cyberpunk aesthetic, right? The ratio is something where it's like 90-10. 90% information, 10% YouTube theatrics, right? Mama Max's video was like 10-90. 10% information, 90% weird, dark editing Batman voice. I don't think, like, as much as I hate his editing and hate all that stuff, I don't think people, like, really care as long as the information is there. That's, like, the biggest problem, and I, I can't believe he can't see that. What is going on, you know what I mean? And I hate, I'm getting so, like, oh, I'm getting so, like, worked up because I really feel for this guy. Like, all jokes aside, all criticism aside, I hate to see a man... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I hate to see a man fall so hard. I've been reading the comments in my last video. I've been, like, listening to a lot of his ex-fans. And I feel so bad for them because they really do. They, they really look up to this guy. And he's just failing people constantly with this whole situation. Like, I, I, I think if he would have listened, like, read the comments, he could have made a way better response than this. I, I don't know. Like, I could have made a better response just from talking to his fans in my comments. And people are making all these public attacks, not platforming any of us, not wanting to talk to the survivors themselves. And when people do talk to the survivors, they're getting attacked just because they're transgender. Now that's sad that that's happening. You know, El Bozo for anyone who's making fun of the alleged victims for that. That's totally, you know, unacceptable in my opinion, especially with a very serious situation as this, you know, this is. But come on, Max, come on. Are you kidding me? 
You know why you said that. You know why you put that in the video. You're sympathy baiting. This whole video is sympathy baiting, dude. Like, you know why you said that, and it's so frustrating, man. It's so frustrating. This whole video is like sympathy bait, man. You know why you said that, dude. And it's so frustrating. This has been very difficult. And I know if, if I could have just started with making everything clear from the beginning, maybe this could have all been avoided. You could still do that. You could still do that. Instead of these antics, this apology video, you could still do that, man. And I take accountability for that. I just thought that people, if people wanted to know what was going on, they would just go to the podcast. And we put the podcast on Spencer's channel to help her build her own platform. Because survivors need more than just a voice. They need financial help. And I don't think there's anything wrong with this, right? Like having the podcast, that's great, but that's one person's side. I hate to say this. Of course, we can't just believe Spencer right off the bat. No one knows Spencer. You didn't even make a video where we could have like connected with Spencer's story. You just had a six hour podcast with Spencer just telling her side of the story. You could have like introduced us to Spencer in a longer video, like the whole story, right? But instead, you didn't. You didn't do that. How are we supposed to like believe Spencer? How are we supposed to connect with this person where we just listen to one side of the story and only one victim at that? This whole thing about wanting to launch her own like career and like helping platform her, I understand that. Honestly, at the end of the day, that's not your priority here. Starting some, you know, alleged victims podcast or career is should not be your goal in the slightest. If they decided to do that and then you just kind of supported it, that would have been one thing. But focusing your energy on that just shows a lack of perspective here. They need psychological help. They need medical care. They need uh, a loving family. They need a roof over their head. Survivors need a lot. I've been trying to provide that. You're going to provide that? You're a YouTuber, my guy. You need to get them actual help. Like you're not, you shouldn't be the one providing that. Especially with the Spencer person. You like living with this person just shows how close you are to the situation and to the whole like story. Is there not, am I the only one cr who's crazy here? Like, is there not like a conflict of interest there? Like how are you supposed to look objectively at this story when one of the people that are involved with the story are living in your house? If there's evidence that goes against what Spencer says, how are you supposed to to look at that objectively when the person's living in your house, dude. This makes no sense. And you're not going to give them medical care. I mean, the fundraiser's fine, or like raise money for the alleged victims. And I have to say alleged because I don't know if this could be an innocent guy, which is like the worst part of this all. You can raise money and stuff, but you, it's not your responsibility to take care of these people, man. I can understand why your heart would go out to these people, but it's not your responsibility, dude. You're a YouTuber. You're not a medical physician. You're not a counselor. You're a YouTuber, my guy. Your job was to bring awareness and to create the best video possible. Then it's just, it's not enough. And it feels like when, when we reach out for help, people just want to use that opportunity to, to attack us, to hate on me. I want to make this point very clear that criticism isn't hating on someone. Like, of course, criticism can get too far. People could lie about Mama Max. You know, I've seen some pretty hateful stuff. I admit that, that I have seen that personally, and I understand that is happening. But criticism is not hatred, Max. Do you think we all hate you? Do you think I think about you on a daily basis and, like, actively hate you? Okay, I might have said something along the lines of I hate this dude's face in my other video, but that's just because, like, the Batman voice really gets to me. In general, and I was being a little bombastic there, but in general, I don't actually hate this guy. If anything, I feel sorry. Like, I feel sorry for the position this guy's in, especially after my video and seeing all the comments of his ex-fans and talking to them. I don't, I don't encourage any kind of harassment or anything like that. But again, criticism is not hatred. Criticism is necessary. Criticism is the way we look at things and are able to, like, take things objectively. Like, criticism is important. I feel so bad that he feels attacked. But again, it's like, in every situation, Mama Max seems to, like, make it about himself. Back in the day, Mama Max started a campaign called YouTube Pick a Side. Basically, he made this giant video about YouTube and how they were allegedly protecting by, you know, striking down dark videos, videos that had, that were talking about topics that were, you know, kind of on the darker side, right? In the video that he made, he had this whole section where he basically talked about his beef with another YouTuber named Corpse Husband. So Max's video title is Pick a Side YouTube, and what he meant with this is basically like, hey YouTube, you can either pick the side of the creators, or you can pick the side of a bunch of predators and evil people. In this video, he also called upon the influence, the raw numbers of larger YouTubers like Critical, like
like Shane Dawson. And he's like, hey, guys, come help me get that message out there uh, about these issues to hopefully get a conversation started with YouTube as a company. He even calls out some people personally like Corpse Husband and is like, hey, I know you've to me in the past. Uh, he brings up some old personal drama he has with him. He's like, you know what, Corpse, I'll forgive you if you come and support this message. This is your chance to redeem yourself. Don't squander it. Corpse. I know you have nothing to do with this, but with all of your power, influence, and the favor you owe me, I just couldn't help myself. So, remember when you reached out after years of not speaking to me while I was at the hospital tending to my sick girlfriend, and you kept trying to rush me home to do you a huge favor, and then you threw me under the bus for something you did, and at the same time acted like you were taking full responsibility for it, and then you stopped talking to me immediately after you were done using me. So, how about you do me the f favor this time and talk about something besides yourself for once and then now in this situation the last video he put out you know the one about charlie or whatever right exposing charlie oh charlie didn't message me fast enough so now i have to make this video and get his attention like batman or something right oh. my intention in reaching out to you especially through private channels like Discord, was to foster a private approach to address these serious matters. Unfortunately, your silence has left me with no choice but to resort to more public forms of communication. And here, again, about yourself, dude. You, you make every situation about yourself. And I'm sorry, I hate, I hate having to say this, man. I really do, but it, it's just so clear that you, you, Mama Max, are in your own way. And I just feel so bad. Like, I, I don't want to say this. I don't want to make this video. I don't want to talk about this anymore. But I, how can I not? How can I not? I think I have a responsibility to, re to react to this at this point. It's hard. This is really hard. Let's just start from the beginning. I met Spencer. She told me what happened to her. Uh, I told her I was busy with other projects, but if you need me to hand this to someone else, I will. She said, no, I want you. And so a few years later, I finally came back and I was like, okay, are you ready? And we did the podcast. And while I was there listening to her, that's when I realized this is, this is going to evolve into something much more. Like originally, I just wanted to do a podcast where we platform survivors and they tell their story, but you can't you can't just tell your story anymore. Now you need concrete evidence. Now you need to go to law enforcement multiple times. Now you need to consult with lawyers. Are you kidding me? Like this is the most dog shit response I've ever heard in my life. Now you need concrete evidence? Of course. Of course. Dude, people are so frustrated at the amount of times that there are illegitimate um, allegations thrown and destroys innocent people's lives. Pe innocent people go to jail like all the time, constantly. It happens. And of course people want evidence. Now I'm all about platforming alleged victims, right? And getting their voices out there and listening to those, you know, allegations. To say that now, oh, all of a sudden now you need concrete evidence. You can't just listen to someone make an unsubstantiated claim anymore. Well, of course not. Are you crazy? This is about the worst response. Like, this is the worst thing you could say. Of course we need evidence. You can't just... This could be... This Cameron guy could be an innocent man. So you expect us to, like, destroy this man's life on no evidence and just the word of, like, a few people? Because even you admit that you don't have a lot of the, like, uh, survivors yet. Like, not a lot of them are coming out. And allegedly, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are in this cult. But you have a handful of people speaking out. So we're supposed to believe that there was a cult. A vampire dankula cult with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of victims and you only have a handful of them with no evidence or at least not showing us any evidence and we're all supposed to just hate this guy and destroy his life like <laughs> on just your word and the word of a few people and i don't want to minimize what they potentially went through right like what what uh, you know victims of potentially could have gone through but you can't just go around destroying people's lives on, on a whim, you yourself, Mama Max, went through this exact situation. Like, six of his girlfriends came out and said that Mama Max was an abuser, right? Like, you were in this exact situation. How how could you be so lightheaded? Like, how could you be so dumb? Of course. Are we just supposed to believe your girlfriends who said you abused them without 
any evidence? So now we're supposed to just believe all victims with no evidence. So does that make you an abuser? Like, I can't, I can't fathom. This is the worst response. This is the worst thing you could possibly say. Like, we can't just listen to survivors when they're screaming for help. And that's why I've been taking all of these creative experimental approaches to try to bolster their voice and they're not working these creative experimental things just aren't working dude they're not I, I you just have to like you're gonna have to live with that dude it's not working that not only can they be heard but they can be seen and they can be addressed <sighs> and i'm sorry to charlie i really am sorry i did not mean to make you upset because in your response video about taking accountability, the one person you should be apologizing to is Charlie, of all people, right? Yes. Uh, you know, you totally took this entire very serious case and pretty much botched it, ensuring that these alleged victims will probably never get any kind of, you know, uh, justice ever because of how terribly you took this case, right? And the one person you're apologizing to is Charlie, Moist Critical. Like, of, of course, that's definitely what needs to be in this 15 minute video of you taking accountability. So, instead of addressing all the random rumors that people make up and responding to criticism, talking about the wrongdoings of other influencers, I'm, I'm just gonna take accountability for my actions. How? We, in this, in the last nine minutes, you took zero accountability. And honestly, it's not your place to talk about the wrongdoings of other creators, quote unquote. Like this whole video has been such a pity party. And he straight up just says he doesn't want to like address the criticism. When, when I, I, I don't understand how not addressing any criticism is taking accountability. What he says, I'm taking accountability and then does nothing like zero show that he's taking accountability. Like, I, I don't understand. You can just say I'm taking accountability now. <laughs> <laughs> and then that just means that you're taking accountability like really taking accountability would have like taking accountability would have been taking down that dumb Charlie react video that's now you know the sniper wolf react video you know the video we talked about last time right the taking accountability would have been pulling that video down and instead of having this dog shit apology putting up an actual video that goes over the entire situation like that this this documentary he's trying to shill and in a minute he's about to shill this dumb documentary like this documentary that you're shilling should have been out by now don't no one cares dude like you are losing subscribers you are losing views you are losing these necessary eyes that need to see this case alleged case right you're losing all that right now honestly instead of capitalizing on the negative press which you probably should be doing instead you're just creating more negative press for yourself because like I i'll be serious like i'll be honest right now he has so many eyes on him right now that he could turn this around if he had the proof, the evidence, all this shit, he could turn this around in the most spectacular way possible. We could all be eating our words right now, but instead, he takes accountability while taking zero accountability. This is where we are. If you don't want to help, you don't have to. But if you do, please reach out to me. We will invite you to our server. What's so weird about this whole situation is that, man, he, he frames things in the public eye so much differently from what I understand in the private. So before, we talked about how he, you know, guilt tripped Charlie into wanting to cover this case or whatever with all the dms charlie had COVID, and that's why he didn't you know dm him back on discord and now we have other clips of other creators talking about their time privately with mama max that does not line up with his public persona so like youtuber turkey tom who's pretty much known for covering the same dark topics as mama max mama max reached out to turkey tom and <laughs> This is what he said. This is what Tom said about his whole interaction with Mama Max. Mama Max? Um, I don't even know all, all of that stuff. I can tell you like what went on with me and Mama Max. Um, okay. So um there's this there's this like case Max is talking about a lot with this guy named Camden Gerard Davis, who's supposedly running this like sex cult or something, right? So uh I've been hearing about this for a little while from Max. Supposedly there was gonna be some video about it that was gonna like expose him. And Max uh messaged me and a bunch of other YouTubers trying to get us to talk about it. Um he said there was like this cult that uh was being run by this guy and there were a bunch of victims and it needed to be exposed. And I was like, All right, well, if you wanna talk to me about it, I'll talk to you about it, whatever. So I uh got added to he maybe he maybe like signed an NDA that he told me only applied to uh before the video was released and then when it was out I could talk about it. So he basically just added me to a group chat and then like gave me a basic rundown of like there's this cult 
but uh, the majority of it, rather than um, telling me about the the information itself, was like trying to like convince me why I need to do a video about it. He was like, "It'd be a big opportunity for your channel. You get a lot of views. You could be on the ground floor of the story. You could, you know, be in on something that a lot of creators are going to talk about. You know, when Joe Rogan talks about it, it's going to be a big deal. Stuff like that, right? Um, and I was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, maybe, but I, for me to cover a story personally, first of all, I need to see evidence that all of it is real. And secondly, like I would rather you publish your own video first and publish all the evidence publicly for everyone to see and then maybe i'll do a video right i don't know it's like mama max is one person behind the scenes and another person in in front of all of us like how am i supposed to believe this guy where all of the survivors and all of the evidence is growing next we have to wait for law enforcement and multiple law teams who specialize in cold cases take this to them as we have already done if when that is complete or if that goes unresolved then we will drop the full documentary or at least part one of the documentary. I guess at this point it would be like part two or three, but I hope you can all understand my position. We are living in a world where survivors scream for help and no one wants to listen. That's not true. I, I just can't, I can't fathom what he says here. No one wants to listen. That's not true. We just don't know about it. We just don't hear it. Like the, the idea that the general public just does not care about children being taken advantage of in vampire werewolf cults makes me so frustrated as someone in the general public. Dude, these types of things blow up when they come to light. Like people really do care. True crime, I've said this before, true crime is so big and people do care. And I, I feel so angry as someone in the general public who finds out about this stuff and is actually livid when he finds out, you know what I mean? Like this idea that people don't care about this pisses me off. Like we're not all just uncaring monsters, right? This is so condescending to the average person. You think you as some goddamn YouTuber with, what is it now, 700k subscribers is above people? You think you care more about the children than the average person? Go eat a sandwich, you dumb bitch. Like, it just pisses me off so much that, like, you think that just because you cover these topics that you care more than the average person. It's not true, dude. It's just not true. Not all of us have the time or the resources to cover topics. Like, not all of us can be journalists. Some of us have bills to pay. Some of us have, you know, pets, children, families to feed. We can't spend all of our time on topics like this. And a lot of us, you know, mentally don't have the energy to cover or listen to topics like this constantly. But everyone does that what they can. That's why when, you know, situations like this happens and you see people starting, uh, what is it, like GoFundMes or Patreons or whatever, those things get filled to the brim with donations because people people do care people do what they can and to say that they don't is so condescending and so up your own ass that i think mama max lives in a whole delusion of his own he thinks he's batman i've said this before because of the stupid voice but i really do think he thinks he's like batman or something like the idea that we don't care is so frustrating there are children living in literal hell and we can't hear them And this is when he starts the youth pastor, you know, music in the background and starts saying something dramatic. I really feel bad for this guy. I really do. Like, it must be a lot of pressure. But damn, dude, does he shoot himself in the foot and just insult, insult the general public saying that we don't care. My brother in Christ. All right. Hopefully I don't have to talk about this guy ever again in my entire life. By some miracle, if Max is listening to this, my advice is hand this off to someone else or drop the documentary. You really only have two options there. I don't know. For anyone else listening, thank you for watching. I'm done. I I'm going back to bed.